All right, now if you're following along in your notes, we're gonna skip lesson three entirely. It, um, it goes into calorimetry a little bit more in depth, but uh, we're getting short on time. We're cruising through this pretty good. It's not necessarily anything you need to know. So we're gonna pass that one over and we're gonna jump straight into lesson four. Lesson four is all about the different ways that you can represent enthalpy. So if you're in taking a science class in university and they start talking about enthalpy change or, or any of these kind of energetics, kind of that topic, there's four different ways that you might be presented with information. So you should be familiar with all four of these. So we'll just go through each one kind of a piece at a time here so that you're, uh, that you're familiar with them. So. Uh, the first thing you need to know is enthalpy symbols. So before we talked about this uh, in the terms of you know delta H equals N delta HM sort of like this. But there was at the beginning, and I told you not to worry about it for then, this extra R that was put in there. So we should know that now that the delta H, if you remember, this delta H is talking about the total energy. So the entire campfire, just how much energy is coming off of this thing. Delta HM, on the other hand, this other piece, is per mole. And I use the example of talking about per log on the fire. So depending on how much uh, stuff there is, that number can be quite different. Now the nice thing between those two is, well, let's, let me put it this way. The reason delta HM is probably even more valuable than just talking about delta H is kind of like the example of gas mileage. If you were talking about a car and you just said, well, I can fill up my gas tank and I can go 200 kilometers. And somebody else can fill up their gas tank and they said, well, I can do 500 kilometers on a gas tank. That still doesn't really tell us much in terms of which car is better on gas. Maybe this one just has a huge gas tank and this one has a little piddly gas tank or, or some other factor. So that's kind of like delta H. It's just a total, just how far could you go, how much energy was there, but no, no other information to put that into context. We could take that exact same, those exact same examples though, and say, well, in my car, I can go, uh, and how do they do that metric? You know, in, in the US they use miles per gallon. No, sorry, miles per gallon. Uh, up here I think it's liters per 100 kilometers is what it's usually measured in. So you might say, well, it takes me to go 100 kilometers, it takes me 50 liters per 100 kilometers. And maybe this one is 20 liters per 100 kilometers. Well, now I can see that is a much better, more efficient car than the other one, because this one takes 50 liters to go, you know, roughly from here to Lethbridge. But without that information, just looking at the, the original, you know, 200 and 500, it's, it's very difficult to tell. Now we could change that around and say the same thing. Let's say this car is, uh, is 20 liters per 100 kilometers and maybe the other one is like five liters per 100 kilometers. Now this one's much more efficient. So delta HM is that number. It's the one that puts it per mole. So now we have a context to be able to say this one was more efficient or that's more efficient or this releases more energy than this one per amount of fuel rather than just a total number. So delta HM is universal. As long as you're talking about the same reaction type, the delta HM should be the exactly the same whether I'm burning five grams of, of gasoline or whether you're lighting a gasoline refinery, the delta HM of those should be exactly the same. Okay, so that's the nice thing. It's universal. Delta HM is, or delta H is very, very specific. And we're going to come back to that in a second here. Now, the R is also important right here, this guy, because it tells us what kind of reaction we're talking about. So in your notes, there's a little box there. And some of the things that could be in place of that R could be something like a, a C for a combustion reaction. 
right? That tells me that I'm burning that particular fuel. Um, F could be that you're forming it from its elements, so that's a formation. Uh, it could be an uh, SD sometimes to tell you it's a simple decomposition, so the opposite of formation, taking a thing and breaking it down to its elements. I'm just going to write decomp here. Or, and then R is kind of a catch-all, like a, maybe it doesn't fit one of these other types of reactions very well, so we just we put R. But usually then they'd have to give you some other information to specify what that reaction was. Uh, the little not superscript, sometimes you'll see uh, something like that on a on a symbol. That just means under standard like SATP kind of conditions, normal temperature, pressure, that kind of, of stuff. And um, but it's important to know that these are reaction specific. So let me clear this for a second, and let me give you an example. Let's say you wanted to take um, the delta CHM of propane. So we would write that as C3H8. And we'll come back to why I wrote that underneath, but, but that's what we're talking about, where the combustion of propane is a exothermic number, uh, and I don't know off the top of my head what that number might be. But it's going to be a different number than the delta FHM of propane. So even though they're the same um, molecule here, it's both propane, one, we're talking about what, well, how much energy is either absorbed or released when I burn propane, and the other one's talking about what happens when I form propane. Those are two completely different things. Those energy values will be absolutely different. So that's why that, that C or that F or, or whatever symbol might be in there is going to change what we're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, very dramatically. All right. Now, uh, that's probably a good intro to this, just to get you through that first part. I'm probably going to break the, the next part up into a, a couple of videos to, to break it down into the pieces. There's four different ways that you need to know how these get represented. So we'll go through each one or maybe a couple in a video, depending on how long they get. And then I'll have a separate video to show you uh, some practice, so uh, an example question that we'll work through together. So see you on the next one.